These services for June 20th, 2021. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you brought us together to know you better and deeper wherever we are. Let us be saturated by the Holy Spirit now so that we can clearly see you in your word. May your word truly free us and empower us to live out your word, especially on what we listen today. We love you with our heart, mind, soul, and all of our strength. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
passage is from James chapter 5, verse 12 to 13. Jimin Park is going to read it for us. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your ye be ye, and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. As any among you afflicted, let him pray. As any merry, let him sing psalms. This is TGE Word of the Lord. Amen. So, teacher Seo Young Son is going to pray for us. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us such a beautiful Sunday morning. In fact, I thank you for giving us the whole week to us as we've had the strength and power to gather in front of you despite it being online. Please have blessing upon Pastor Alicia as she delivers us the sermons and as they're your words to us. Please have blessing upon the whole school year actually as it comes to an end of June and we are almost coming to an end of the school year. As we wrap up the school year, we ask that we remain faithful in you and that we end the school year well in prayer. I also ask for blessing upon the summer VBS camp that's coming up. As we dive deeper into your words, we hope for your um, blessing and your power and that everything is allowed just in you. Thank you so much for everything, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's sermon title is, Do Not Swear, Pray Instead. As usual, I'll give you 10 seconds. Within the 10 seconds, think about one thing that you're thankful for and share that with someone around you. I'll give you 10 seconds. Okay, I cannot hear uh, what you're saying because we are most of you are doing online service, but then there is like an on-site service nowadays. So yeah, I sometimes hear from you what you're saying, but most of you are saying you are thankful for your family because they are there for you and thankful for your like friends and water and food. So it's all good to hear. And I am also thankful for everything. So um, I want to say thankful for. Uh, Thankful for, I'm thankful for like great weather and time and everything God pro has provided to me. Um, yeah, I wanted to share my gratitude also. Um, before we begin, uh, we'll have VBS, like 2021 VBS. So there's a video clip that you can watch together. Let's watch it together. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us, so trust God. God is with us, so trust God. Hello everyone. I'm so happy to tell you about 2021 BBS. 2021 BBS is Wilderness Theme. Through the BBS, the whole program, you will see how God protects and guides the Israelites. In the same way, you will also see how God leads you and also provides you everything you need. So, you are excited, I guess? Okay, so you can mark down July 1st, and 2nd, and 3rd. So those are the days that you can see us online. So, I want to say this, God is with us, so trust God. So, I'll see you soon. Our friends, Yes, as you saw it, uh, I want to see you there, I mean on site, I mean online, everyone, right? So the theme is wilderness, wilderness, escape. 
and July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. You can mark down on your calendar those days. So we are going to meet up from the morning until um, after lunch. So there's like a four parts. Celebration, Moses Tent, Israel Camp, and Games. So it has like um, role playing and snacks and craft and games, like a lot of fun. Um, and your parents will pick up the goodie bag from next week. So you can have that. So when you get your goodie bag, do not eat anything there for now. And you can um, check with your parents what you can eat before BBS starts or what you cannot eat, right? Okay, good. So we're going to have lots of fun. Okay, so let's begin. So as we begin, as usual, I have a question for you. So what of you or your position will remain after you go to heaven? So that means if you are not here anymore, like on earth, if I'm not here anymore, if you're not here anymore, and when people around you Think about you or me. What would the people around you remember about you? Is it going to be what? Think about it. What is that? You go by what you have, like car or house or like how smart you are. But then when they talk about you, they have to be sure whom they are talking about, right? They are talking about. So, your name. Your name is important. Because after you are not here anymore, I mean, like, just be, it's not like that you go to heaven, but here, if you are talking about something, about the someone who are not here with you, you need to tell your friend about the person's name. So name is not just name or labeling. It's more than that. It is just like you, representing you. So in Korean, there's proverb like this. 호랑이는 죽어서 가죽을 남기고, 사람은 죽어서 이름을 남긴다. So you cannot have anything with you, but then just like a name, right? In English, we have this expression. He who leaves the fame of good works after him does not die. That means if you do a lot of good things, people remember you even after you die but when they remember you they also remember your name right so thinking about your work and also need to know you your name so your name is really important and then your name represents you i'm focusing on that why because in our scripture today our sermon we'll be talking about name name of you can guess name of God. Okay, so let's do that. You're ready, right? So point one, there's only two points today. Point one, do not swear. Do not swear. S-W-E-A-R. Hmm. Why you don't want to swear? Yes, the Bible said do not swear, of course. For this, let's think about why we swear we sometimes swear but this time because grade one to three you're with us too so you may think what does swear mean what does that mean the word not familiar right so we'll get there don't worry okay um swear that means making a solemn serious statement or affirming that something is the case. You're just believing this is the case. You're saying, I'm sure, I'm really sure this is the case. I'm sure he did it. I'm sure I didn't do it. So it's like a swear. It's like a swearing word, right? Not just us, but in the Bible, like back to like uh, back in like the first century, they also swear a lot. I mean, swear a lot. Hmm. But then the Bible says, do not swear. Hmm. Why? Why? Because, you know, like uh, in the Bible, it's like people use that in this sentence. May God deal with me, be it ever so serious, like severely, if 
blah blah blah. So it's like a not just saying I swear, but I say you know I didn't do this. But then someone is saying that I did it. Someone is condemn condemning me. So I say oh I didn't do it. That's okay, right? But then people back in first century said, you know, I swear by God's name, I didn't do it. Or I say if I have done that, I want God punishes me. It's like a strong sentence that I didn't do it. But then still, this makes really huge mistake. Okay, let me show you one picture. Today is like a, the only picture. What is that? What is that? Ten commandment. Ten commandment. So when you swear something, you are making a mistake. You're breaking one of the ten commandments. What is it? Read the right side. One, two, three, four, up to ten. Yes, number three, respect God's name. Okay, let me read it in a different version of the Bible. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Name of the Lord your God, you're not going to misuse it. Name of the Lord is Lord. So that is important. You're not going to misuse God's name. So you're not going to swear with using God's name. You know, like when you go to like a secondary school, some people say, oh my gosh, Jesus, oh my God. They say that a lot. And then I tell them, you are breaking one of the Ten Commandments. You're not going to misuse God's name. When you call God's name or God, you have to be serious. My like God. And then you can pray. But it's not like, oh my God. No, you're not going to use it like that way. So when you swear with using God's name, that's the issue. So James here, he said, do not use that, right? Remember James? James is the brother of Jesus Christ. And then he was the church leader, and he wanted to be practical for people in the first century. Not just reading the Bible, but in practical way, do this and don't do that. So he's saying that do not swear. Right? Let me read verse uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 22. David is saying that. David is swearing. May God deal with David, be it ever so severely, if by morning I live alive one male of all who belong to him. So he got so mad over someone whose name is Naval. And he's saying, I'm going to kill everyone. And then he's swearing using God's name. You may express that that is just severe and serious, but then you're not going to use God's name in this way. You can easily break the Ten Commandments. Let me read verse 12. Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else, let your yes be yes, and your no, no, or you will be condemned. So you're not going to swear by the sun or moon. Why? Because you cannot make sun, you cannot make moon. You, can, you cannot deal with the sun and moon. It's there. You cannot control them. So you're not going to swear by sun and moon and God. No. Then what do we do? I mean, when we swear something, we do that because we feel really wrongful. Something's going wrong. But I want to kind of prove my innocence, but it is hard. That's why you're saying that harsh word, a severe word. But the Bible says do not do that. And today's chapter, today's Bible, James says, do not swear, but verse 13, what did he say? Pray. So point two, pray instead. Instead of swearing, you're going to pray. Also, prayer, pray. Remember last week's sermon? So you're going to pray continually. Do you recall? Do you remember? Okay, let me read verse 13 from today's passage. Is any one of you in trouble? You swear because you are in trouble, right? 
He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. When you're in trouble, you pray. However, you do not pray only when you are in trouble. If you do that, you're going to be in trouble. So you have to pray 24-7 all the time. Remember, God wants us to pray 24-7. And I said last week, you need to sleep, you're a human being. You need to eat. You need to talk to your friend. And you need to talk to your family, your siblings. How, do you, how can you pray 24-7? Every moment, every second, how can you pray? Remember? We'll get there. We're going to review last week's sermon. And also that is our point to today. Last week's sermon, the chapter in the book was 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 15-16. to 16. It was from, I mean, 15 and 16, it's not from last week's sermon, but the right after the passage. Let me read it for you. Now, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. Remember last week? When King Solomon built the temple and his palace, and he worshipped God, he prayed God. And then God said, you know what? My eyes and my heart will be at this temple. Whenever you pray here, I mean, whenever you're here, look at this site and pray, and I will listen. But then there were conditions. Remember, we talked about like covenant last time. When we say covenant in the original language, in Hebrew, that is like a Cutting, cutting the covenant. Why? Because you put the animals there and then you cut it, make it into pieces. And you're saying, I'm that serious. I'm going to keep the promise. If I don't keep it, I may be cut like this. So I'm going to keep it no matter what. Keep the promise, right? And God said that God is going to hear our prayer. If you do this, what are the things that we talked last week? There were four things, but then we are focusing on two. Humble yourselves, pray continually, seek God's face, turn away, turn away from your wicked doings. So humble yourselves and turn away from the wicked doings. That is under the first one, pray continually. Because when you pray, you humble yourselves and then you turn away from the wicked doings. No sins, right? And then you're going to seek God's face. Remember? Also, I mentioned this last week. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray continually. That's what God wants. Pray continually. 24-7. As I mentioned earlier, we have to sleep, eat, talk, drive. Not now, but later. I mean, years later, you have to drive. But then you have to pray 24-7. Continually. How? You lift up your heart and seek for God's face with your whole heart. Seek for what God wants. Whatever you do, think about that you do that in the presence of God. Koram Deo, in the presence of God. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you study, whatever you sleep, whatever you do, you do it in the presence of God. Pray continually. You lift up your heart. And you seek God's faith 24-7 with your whole heart. And I want to add one more thing on this prayer. It has to be your earnest prayer. E-A-R-N-E-S-T. Like a eager. That means you have your whole heart. Like with your whole heart, you just pray so hard. Just like there's no emergency at all. This is my emergency and then you have your full attention and intention on this prayer. Just like, like Queen Esther, when she went to uh, before the king at the time, if the king doesn't call the queen and then queen just show up, shows up, then queen 
could get killed at that time in Persia. But then Esther prayed God, you know what, God, I'm going to talk to the king. After I finish the certain amount of prayers, and I don't want to get killed, of course, right? Um, and Esther prayed God like with her whole heart. And then she went to the king and then talked about things, right? So that kind of prayer, if something goes wrong, I may get killed. So I'm going to pray so hard. That kind of heart, we are going to pray, like eager, right? Just like you have your house. You have the facet, you just turn, turn it, and then you use the water. And then the facet is broken, the water is just like kind of just continually comes out. You have to make it stop, right? Water is like running now. And that case, you cannot close it. The pipe is like broken. Then you cannot go back to your table and study. You cannot go back and sleep. You cannot go back and eat. Because this is like so emergency. Water is just coming out and it's going to be all over. Flood. It's going to be flawed. Then it's your emergency. Just like when you pray, think about that like your emergency. Nothing else is important, but this is. Bring the matter and leave that to God. And again, seek God's face wholeheartedly. 100% pure. Not 70 on God and 30% maybe on something else. No, right? No. God wants your whole heart. So like uh, seeking God's face, it's like I said, it's like a uh, loving someone. So when you wake up in the morning, eyes open, you think about the person. Throughout the day, you think about the person. Oh, what does he or she do? What is he doing now? What is she doing now? Right? All the time you think about the person. When you go to bed, you think about the person and you sleep. Just like that. When you open your eyes. Think about God and pray. You know what? Me, when I open my eyes in the morning, the first thing I say is, thank you, God, for this another beautiful day. And then I recite because I remember, I memorized Psalm 23. So every morning I recite Psalm 23, either in English or in Hebrew. <laughs> you saw me like a year ago, right? Uh, talking about, I mean, reciting Psalm 23 in Hebrew. So I want you to think about God in the morning and pray. Or maybe you can think about one chapter or some verses of the Bible. And then you just think about it, meditate on it continually. And then throughout the day and the end of the day, pray, right? So we need to be ready for a spiritual warfare instead of swearing. No swear, right? So I want you and I for fall in love with God and pray continually with our whole heart. Let God has our full attention and intention. Okay. I want to say I want to bless us so that um, God can bless us. I want to bless us so that we can have the good relationship in God, deeper relationship and a fruitful relationship. May God bless you abundantly. This time I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes now. Close them. Have you sworn by anything before? If you have, maybe you didn't know that you were not supposed to. So you can decide not to swear anymore just now. Maybe you can ask for the forgiveness if you have done that. The Bible today, James, said just simply say yes to yes, no to no, right? Instead of swearing, today's passage says, you need to pray. We know prayers are important. How do we pray all the time? What is your plan for prayers? 
you to be specific. Will you set up time to pray at least? Like, for example, like 9 p.m. I'm gonna pray, or 8 p.m. I'm gonna pray, or when I go to sleep, I'm gonna pray. Will you stop everything and focus on praying when you pray? So, what is your plan? Maybe this question is the same as how would you love your God more? How can you love your God more? You can be immersed, saturated. Those means like a soaked, like a fully observing. You're going to fully observe God's love. Maybe that would work. Then you may be filled with God's love and then you may love God back and pray continually and you may love people around you. And you can... Also, maybe count the blessings you have received from God. There's many ways. Think about your way. How can you love our God more? You want to praise? You want to read the Bible? You want to watch Bible movies? What is your way? Just plan and maybe you can do one thing today. If you don't know, How can you love our God more? Maybe you can ask God for help now. God, I want to love you more, but I don't know how to. Can you tell me how to? You can pray now. Dear Heavenly Father, you always give us the wisdom to live our life even more beautifully. all the time. Father, we are very happy to be with you. When we feel things are wrongful, make us come to you. Let us stop swearing. Instead, let us come to you. Help us humble ourselves, turn away from our sins. Pray continually and seek your face with our whole heart. Then we'll see your eyes and your heart are always with us. And knowing that you are with us will make the bravest person in the world in whatever we do. We will do things with overflowing joy and give thanks. We want to think about you 24-7. We want to be in love with you even deeper. Be our everything, Lord. Be at the center of our heart. We love you with our all. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Let's do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debt, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.